Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Patriots Forum, San Fernando Valley. As we look to a government in Washington, D.C. that seems unaccountable to the Constitution and to the citizens of America, we must include attention to the Central Intelligence Agency. Specifically, we look to the assassination of President John F. Kennedy. According to the Warren Commission, of course, Lee Harvey Oswald was the lone gunman and solely responsible. However, anyone else who has studied the evidence comes to a much different conclusion. The prime mechanics of this operation being the Central Intelligence Agency. Our speaker tonight is author Michael Calder. His book, JFK vs. CIA, The Central Intelligence Agency's Assassination of the President, lays out well the evidence that points to this assessment. Mr. Calder explains the reasons why President Kennedy was killed, who actively and tacitly supported the assassination, as well as how it was done. Mr. Calder also explains the singular and exceptional participation of former CIA director Richard Helms in this act, as well as Helms' ties to the MK Ultra program and connection to the assassination of Senator Robert Kennedy. Mr. Calder is a graduate of University of California, Berkeley, where he wrote his thesis that provided the basis for his book. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Michael Calder. In uh, 1986, I uh, read Arthur Schlesinger's book, A Thousand Days. thought what a great, great president this was, and it's too bad the guy got killed. So I go back to the used bookstore, and I, I buy eight, nine books on Kennedy. One of them is Rush to Judgment, Mark Lane's book, uh, Critique of the Warren Commission. So I read it, and I read it in one sitting, and I'm enthralled. But I don't trust him. I want to find out for myself. So I go, and I track down the... 26 volumes, uh, which are the hearings and exhibits produced for the Warren Commission, which the Warren Report is a summary of. So I start reading it for myself, and I get hooked on it. Um, it was just something fascinating when I'm reading Marina Oswald, and she's telling how she met Lee at a dance, and uh, he was an American, but she didn't know it at the time because his Russian was so good, she thought he was from one of the Baltic states. I'm thinking, wait a minute, this is just a kid. He just got out of the Marine Corps, spent almost three years in the Marine Corps, goes to the Soviet Union, he's speaking fluent Russian. Something isn't right. Where do you learn Russian language? Uh, it's not something you just pick up. It's one of the hardest languages to learn, and he knows it. So little warning bells start going off in my head. I'm skipping around the 26 volumes here at Cal State LA. In the summer of 86, and I'm thinking about going uh, back to UC Berkeley to get my degree I left in my junior year when I was a kid. One uh, really interesting night that kind of was relevant for me is it's getting close to midnight. They're kicking me out of the library. And I just got through reading Four Sorrell's testimony. He's the Secret Service in charge of uh, the Dallas office of the Secret Service. He's in the vehicle in front of Kennedy. And these cars are only a car length to two lanes separating them. And he's asked by the Warren Commission, where did the shots come from? Sorrell's tells him, well, the shots came from in front of President Kennedy from a grassy hill area. They're taken aback. He's not supposed to say that. It's supposed to be coming from uh, the Texas School Book Depository from the sixth floor. So they ask him again. He says the same thing. Look, at the time the shots were fired, uh, I distinctly thought my impression was right in front of the Kennedy, slightly to his right up the hill. And I'm thinking, uh, here's a guy who's in the motorcade, who's a law enforcement officer, and he's saying the shots are coming from in front. So I'm about to re-enter Berkeley, and I think while I get the degree, why don't I just uh, avail myself of all of Berkeley's government documents? I know I'm going to find the 26 volumes, and I thought the only way I'll ever know, for my own personal satisfaction, what happened to this man was if I read the 26 volumes, starting with page one, all the way through, and take copious notes. So while I, uh, in those, those two, last two years I'm uh, doing my regular uh, classes, I'm really in the government document section of Berkeley reading those volumes. Then, of course, I come across 12 more volumes from 87, no, from 77, 78, House Select Committee on Assassinations. I come across more government documents, uh, Senate Select Committee studying uh, the CIA in 1975. It's called the Church Committee. That was quite an eye-opener. I come across more documents, Project MK Ultra, Senate Select Committee on Health. So by the time I'm getting ready to write the thesis, I, I know who did it, and I know how they did it. 
but the professor wouldn't let me write it unless I wrote on why, and I had no idea why. I thought I was going to have a breeze and just show how the CIA killed him. But I thought, well, they must have had a good reason for killing him. These guys aren't crazy. Uh, their justification may be wrong, but they must have logical reasons. So I said, well, what is Kennedy doing that got himself killed? He's doing something. So I thought, well, let me have Kennedy tell me. So uh, I, get a, I get his three volumes of public papers. And I start reading them. And I think, well, I'll read the three volumes of public papers, take notes, and then compare them on a week-to-week -week basis with the news magazines of the time period. That way I'll get a cause and effect. Kennedy will do this. I'll see what the effect is. And uh, I was able to put it together and uh, write the thesis. Um, can I get some uh, water back there? In that little bag back there. Thanks. Just some water. Um, first, uh, let's go into the Warren Commission just briefly because this stuff has been covered by other writers. I want to go into the stuff that no one's ever talked about. So I just want to be sort of brief on this part, just so you know that Oswald didn't shoot anybody. Um, the parameters of the assassination identifies the assassins. There's, uh, thanks very much. There's uh, certain parameters you have to do in order to accomplish this assassination. If you can't fill all the parameters, you didn't do it. If you can only fill two or three of the parameters, such as the mafia, you didn't do it. If you can only do one or two, like the Cubans or Castro, you didn't do it. If you can fill three or four, like the KGB, you didn't do it, because there's 12 par parameters or so that you got to fill. One of them uh, would be the fact that there's an imposter running around Dallas in a few weeks before the assassination. He looks exactly like Lee Harvey Oswald. He's uh, seen at a rifle range. People come and testify in front of the Warren Commission. Uh, one guy, Garland Slack, runs the range. He says, uh, at dusk, guy pulled up in a car, asked him to sight in his rifle. He does so, the guy takes a rifle, shoots at a target, bull's eyes, he says, I'm completely satisfied. Garland Slack says, well, if you're satisfied, I'm satisfied. During the Warren Commission hearings, he says it was Lee Harvey Oswald. Well, how do you know it was Lee? Well, I saw him being interviewed uh, when he's coming from homicide, and that was the man I saw who got shot by Jack Ruby. They pulled uh, several other people who saw him uh, at the rifle range, including a doctor and his son. They even talked to the man. The son goes up to the, the man and says, is that a telling man through Carcano? He says, yes, it is, son. Um, and then there's other incidences of someone who looks just like Lee Harvey Oswald, but isn't Lee. We know it's not Lee because of the timing and the fact that this man who looks like Lee can drive a car. Lee Harvey Oswald never learned to drive a car. The Warren Commission is, is concerned about this. They asked Marina, his wife, could Lee drive a car? He says, no, he never learned. Ruth Payne, who uh, Marina and the kids are staying with, said the same thing. Lee never learned how to drive a car. She was trying to get him to at least take the driver's test. Another, uh, boy, just two weeks before the assassination, downtown Lincoln Mercury. Man comes in, uh, takes a red Comet Caliente out, and uh, drives really fast. Scares the heck out of the salesman. The salesman's really angry about it, talks to the sales manager about it, and said, that guy, you know, he was driving like crazy. Well, he doesn't have any money right now, but he says he's coming into a lot of money. In a couple of weeks, he'll be back. He writes the name Lee Oswald down. Well, it's not Lee Oswald. Our Lee can't drive a car. Who is this guy? So this is one of the parameters of the assassination. You've got to be able to have someone with surgeon who is a surgeon who can do surgery on someone to look like Lee Harvey Oswald. This is a clever pre-framing of Oswald. They want to use this to frame Oswald after Kennedy gets shot to show that he's an expert marksman, that he was going to come into some money, probably paid by Castro. But it all falls apart when Lee doesn't learn how to drive a car. And now it can be used against the CIA. But that's a parameter right there. A uh, second parameter, we'll say, is the bullet found on the stretcher, the magic bullet. A whole bullet is found on the stretcher in the emergency room. Um, there's a problem. Three shots were fired. One misses the car. One blows Kennedy's head off. That leaves only one bullet left to go through Kennedy's back, out his throat, into Governor Connolly and cause all of uh, Governor Connolly's wounds. This has to be the bullet. It's on the stretcher. Uh, the problem is the bullet's intact. It's a whole bullet. Uh, Warren Commission is concerned about this. They asked Commander Humes, who did the autopsy, could this bullet have gone through both men? 
He says it could not have gone through either man. Why? Well, uh, went through President Kennedy and out his throat, then into Governor Connolly, tore a bunch of muscles, fractured his right fifth rib, exited Governor Connolly, broke Governor Connolly's right wrist, lodged in his thigh. There should be more material missing from this bullet. So they bring in the surgeon who worked on Governor Connolly. He says, no, this bullet couldn't have gone through either man because he extracted more bullet fragments from Governor Connolly's wrist than are missing from the bullet. So they bring in Robert Frazier. Could this bullet have gone through both men? Robert Frazier is the FBI firearms expert. He says no to the Warren Commission. He says there was no blood on the bullet. There's no deformation of the bullet. The bullet weighs almost the same as a bullet that you would buy. And uh, he'd expect more loss of substance and weight of the bullet. The bullet didn't go through either man. So you got a real problem, especially when they do a ballistics test on that bullet and it matches the Italian manicure Carcano that Oswald supposedly uh, ordered through the mail. So now you got cross evidence of a, <clears throat> a post frame up. If this bullet is matched to the, the murder weapon, but someone had to place it there, that means the murder weapon is also part of the frame up. On that, uh, <clears throat> just on the Italian manicure Carcano itself. So that's the second frame up. You have to have access to the emergency room. Okay, that's a parameter. Uh, on the rifle itself, uh, <clears throat> two police officers find the rifle on the sixth floor. What do they say the rifle was? Italian Malker Carcano? No. In, uh, in those documents and exhibits part, I read Weitzman's uh, report. He says it's a 7.6 caliber German Mauser. Um, thick brownish black sling. Dark oak wood. Uh, two point something weaver scope. And he says it when he uh, appears in front of the Warren Commission, which is, was real dangerous for him, because by that time, everyone knows Lee Harvey Oswald assassinated the president. He used Italian manicure Carcano 6.5. It would have been so easy for Weitzman to say, uh, you know, I was wrong. I just glanced at it. I don't know. You know, what do I know about weapons? He doesn't say that, though. He's challenged when he told the truth by the Warren Commission attorney, you know, what's your expertise on weapons? He says, well, he used to run a sporting goods store, meaning he used to sell rifles. So he knows what rifles looks like. Then he adds, you know, I also was shot down uh, during World War II. I was a pilot. And he's a law enforcement officer. Um, he found it at the same time as another police officer. That police officer also said it was a 7.6 caliber German Mauser. They show him, uh, the Warren Commission does, Oswald's rifle and says, no, I, I can't identify that. Um, I can't identify that as a rifle I found. So what we got going is uh, you have a professional assassin firing from the sixth uh, floor with a, a great rifle, a German Mauser. He then ran across the, uh, the floor and hit it and put a stack of books surrounding it. Well, that, that gun's not supposed to be found. But it is accidentally by the police officers, and now it, it confounds the assassination. But that's another parameter right there, because uh, Oswald supposedly ordered that rifle, the Italian Manicure Carcano, through the mail uh, in March of 63. Well, if Oswald's being framed, you need, now you need to get a guy who can write in Oswald's handwriting. Where are you going to get someone like that, and who's going to get someone like that? So there's all these little parameters that always pinpoint to only one organization, the Central Intelligence Agency. There's penetration of the Secret Service. That's a parameter. The vehicle is supposed to go straight down Main Street, go one more block, and hit the Simmons Access Road. And that's the, the route that's decided by Winston Lawson of the Secret Service. He comes down and figure out uh, what the motorcade route's going to be. Him and four Sorrells go on this route twice. But on the day of the assassination, that's not the route that happens. What happens is Kennedy's car comes down Main Street, doesn't go that extra block, makes a right on Houston, makes a little left in front of the Texas School Book Depository, then starts coming down Elm Street where he goes into the ambush. Now the Warren Commission, they're not stupid, and I'm talking about not so much the Warren Commissioners, because they're never there. The Warren Commissioners are only there when their area of responsibility is there. If your area of responsibility is Jack Ruby, that's when you're there. So you're not hearing Marina's testimony. You're not hearing the Secret Service testimony. You're not hearing anybody's testimony, but about your own area. But the men who are taking the depositions, the Warren Commission lawyers, they know what's up. 